Thank you for joining our Horticulture live Q&A. I'm going to now hand it over to our lovely lecturer to answer any of your questions. Hi, uh, my name's Jeff Guy. I'm the, um, the section manager for the land based department. So I, um, I take care of the horticulture, countryside management and agriculture courses. Uh, and those of you that will um, study horticulture with us in the future may well have the, um, the dubious pleasure of me as one of your, your tutors for some of the modules I, I teach the horticulture students. Um, timber landscape features this year. Um, and we've got a first question here. So what is horticulture? Um, horticulture is, it, as far as our courses are concerned, it, it's um, the, the theory, practice and science behind um, plants, gardening, growing. Um, the, the courses include quite a lot of, uh, of the underpinning science knowledge like plant science and soil science that's important um, for the industry um, and, and for, for the nation, frankly, in terms of, you know, growing and producing things sustainably. Um, and then there's, uh, there's a lot of practical um, plant management, plant propagation, um, plant production uh, and, and the maintenance of those plants. So you might you might be planting and pruning trees. You'll learn to identify different plants and trees um, and learn how to design um, gardens from sort of um, not necessarily your back garden style gardens, but sort of amenity gardens like you'd find in parks and stately homes and things like that. So it's quite a quite a broad, um, quite a broad uh, subject. Um, we've got a question from Steve about entry requirements. So we're looking at um, five GCSEs um, graded um, what used to be um, a C and upwards or, or uh, nowadays that's a four. So um, five GCSEs graded four and up um, and ideally those should include maths and English. Um, science is also helpful, um, especially with the um, with the exams that you'll have to sit on the horticulture course. Um, but the uh, maths and English is particularly important if you do not have a C or a, um, at least a four in maths and English, you will be required to resit them at college. Um, Got a question from Ava about how many days a week? Oh, it's disappeared. Um, sorry, I got my questions. Um, entry requirements. So, and no, we did that one. Um, um, so Ava's question. Uh, I'm hoping to come to Brooksby next year. How many days a week is the course? Um, so the course is, um, th as it runs currently this year, it is two days a week. Um, now that does require, you, you should plan on spending at least another day a week studying uh, and working. Um, the curriculum is is slightly compressed this year because of the COVID situation. So um, to allow us to socially distance and, and to, to limit the spread as much as possible. We have two days in college and then that is supported by work placements and um, additional study outside of college. Um, and also maths and English um, would have to be done outside of those two days as well. Um, sorry, can I just check Chai, are we still is everything still working? My end seems to have frozen. Um, I can't, can't see you. Oh, right. Um, are the answers still coming through? Can Yeah, we can. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll just crack on then, I suppose, as long as everyone can hear me. Um, so, um, yeah, you'll certainly have time to work in a garden centre or do a part time job and, and actually especially if the job is relevant to your course. Um, the you know that the extra work that you um, that you do 
counts towards your qualification. You need to do at least 150 hours of work placement each year um, as a as a prerequisite of passing your course. Um, so we've got another question about entry requirements. So um, what grades do I need to do level two or three? So the the, pre the entry requirements I mentioned previously, that's for um, that's for the level three course. The level three course, five GCSEs, including maths and English and ideally a science as well. Um, that's at grade C or four and above. Um, a level two course, if, if say you don't get those five GCSEs, um, at grade C or, or four, then we can look at enrolling you on a um, on a level two course, um, which doesn't have um, quite such um, high entry requirements. Um, do we cover deforestation? So um, sustainability is a theme um, of of the course that will be touched on in a number of the units that you'd study. Um, we, um, whether we cover it as a, as a sort of a specific topic or not, I, I don't really think so, but we certainly do talk a lot about sustainability. Um, that leads on to a question, do we chop down trees? So, um, Chopping down trees is sometimes a very important part of countryside management, um, sometimes uh, and, and, and of horticulture. If you're managing parks and gardens, um, there might be trees that are dangerous due to due to disease or due to damage by wind and rain um, that need to be need to be taken down for public safety reasons. Um, we also learn to use green wood products, so the timber landscape features unit that I, I teach to students this year um, will involve some harvesting of, of native trees um, using uh, methods like coppicing, um, which is a sustainable wood, uh, you know, timber harvesting practice. You know, you cut down broadleaf trees in winter um, and it promotes their healthy regrowth. Um, so we can then utilise that timber for making fences, benches, chairs, uh, you know, um, pea sticks and bean sticks for growing things in the gardens. Um, so yes, we might chop down some trees, but we would only we only do it in a sustainable manner. Um, and we also plant an awful lot of trees. We've got a 21 acre um, agroforestry project that started this year, um, which is fairly unique um, to Brooksby Melton College. There, I think there's two other colleges in the whole of the UK. Uh, with an active sort of agroforestry project and they're they're quite small compared to what we're doing. Um, and the horticulture students have been involved this year in doing the soil tests uh, and the preparatory work for that project and will be be involved in planting some trees there in the near future. So that's that's something you'd be involved with as well. Um, hopefully that um, that that covers that. So yeah, yeah, we we do chop down trees, but it, it's sustainable. Um, so entry, we've got another entry requirement one. Hope, hopefully I've already um, answered that. Um, kit or uniform? There's no there's no strict uniform. Obviously, we we would like you to come to college dressed um, sort of professionally and and prepared for working outdoors. Um, so you should you should have waterproofs. Um, when you're doing practicals, you'll be required to wear overalls. Um, and steel toe cap boots. Um, obviously, if we're working with machinery, uh, compact tractors, things like that, you, you'll need to have the appropriate health and safety equipment. We'd expect you to provide overalls and boots, um, but any very specialist equipment. So if you're using um, brush cutters, chainsaws, anything like that, we will provide the appropriate um, helmets and ear defenders and visors and um, protective trousers and things like that. Um, how will I be assessed? A question from Steve. Uh, a mixture of methods. So there are some exams um, over the course of a two year level three programme. Um, there are exams in plant and soil science. Um, there is an exam in professional working practices, which combines knowledge from a number of the units to um, and focuses sort of on health and safety and um, best practice in the workplace and that sort of thing. Uh, and then another one in contemporary issues within the industry. 
Uh, so you've got those three three exams um, and but assessment for the for most of the units you'll study is through coursework and ongoing assignments. So some of those will be uh, you'll have an assignment to write an essay over a period of a few weeks, perhaps um, you might have a longer project that that will involve you know gathering gathering information and data on on I know practical growing projects that you're involved in and, and you um, you know collate that at the end at the end of a piece of coursework you might produce design briefs for gardens but you'll also be assessed on the practical work that you do so the um, the competence of, with certain practical tasks you know maintaining and using uh, appropriate machinery um, constructing fences or you know other horticultural skills uh, your skills at planting and pruning that sort of thing so some of that will be assessed practically as well um i've got a question i want to become a lumberjack will this course help me get there um it's it wouldn't be the first choice um we have a an apprenticeship in forestry that I would suggest is the is the first port of call for anyone with um, with that sort of um, ambition. So for forestry apprentice would be would be my first choice. Um, if now the apprenticeship comes with the requirement that you find an employer that will that, that will employ you um full time uh, and then then you'd spend sort of a, a day a week or a day a fortnight in college consolidating what you learn in the workplace um, and your assessment there would be largely by practical assessment um over a period of two years if that wasn't an option for you perhaps if you if you don't have access to an employer that'll that'll put you up we we do have some contacts that might be able to that we could put you in touch with um or if a full time course was um, your preference, then the countryside management course would probably be um, a better option, but it does depend a bit on your on your sort of specific um, ambitions within within that industry. But um, but yeah, the forestry apprenticeship would be would be um, your first port call, I would suggest. The course starts so September 2021. Uh, that's whether it's level two or level three. Um, if you were looking at an apprenticeship, because we do run apprenticeships in horticulture um, as well as the apprenticeship in uh, forestry that I mentioned, um, that can start more or less at any time. Um, so just a case of inquiring, and we can we can help you out with that. Um, we've got. Um, um uh, should someone who has never studied horticulture before start on level two or can they go straight to level three um you can go straight to level three the G gcses is the requirement um, that I mentioned before. So that's the five, five GCSEs, grade four or C, um, including maths and English. You know, you could go straight onto a level three with those qualifications. You, you should have some interest in it um, beforehand, um, but no, there isn't a strict requirement that you have studied it before. Um, In people's guts. So work experience in people's gardens. Um, it depends a bit on sort of how you're doing that. So if, if you're pottering around in your own garden, no, that would not count as work experience. Um, you, if you were working in other people's gardens as a, you know, through a, a business, perhaps a, a gardening firm that you worked for that was working in other people's gardens, then yes, that would be absolutely fine. But if it, if it's just your own garden, that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be sufficient. Um, um, so what job could I go into? So 
there's there's quite a lot of jobs um, that that would be options if you if you look around online. Um, National Trust estates require garden staff. Um, county councils require garden staff, um, and then then there's also plenty of options in self-employment as well or landscaping. Uh, that's that's those are just some examples. I mean, that there's um, nursery work as well, um, which is where you, you, you sort of propagate and grow plants for further sale, garden centres, design work um, or, or going on to higher education potentially. What types of facilities do you have? Um, so we have a, a state of the art glass house, um, which the, the students use on a weekly basis. Um, we also have, all, you know, all, all the relevant hand tools and machinery. So horticulture students can expect to learn to use compact tractors, spraying equipment, um, chainsaws, brush cutters, hand tools, um, all that sort of thing. We have um, a really nice, uh, fairly modern teaching building, um, the Jutland Centre, um, which is, is set up with, you know, there's a common room for students in there. There's classrooms, computer rooms, that's where all the theory work is taught. We do have two practical workshops in there as well, um, where students might hone their um, skills on maintaining tools and equipment. Um, uh, and we also have an 850 hectare estate, um, which includes a farm and grounds. So the, the horticulture students will find themselves sometimes out on the farm um, doing studies into plant and soil science or being getting involved in the agroforestry project. Um, but also in the sort of the ornamental part of the grounds, looking at, at through the um, the arboretum, taking care of the trees and plants um, and water features and what have you that we've got there. Um, let's see. Um, what do the students like most about Hort? Um, I'd probably have to say the the outdoor hands on side of it um, as a, a student that came, you know, I came through a further education college as a student myself um, on a countryside management course rather than horticulture. But certainly that was always the thing I appreciated about learning at an FE college, um, the practical element. You know, we weren't just in classrooms talking about things. Um, we were doing you know learning by doing and and that really is at the heart of um of the horticulture and any other course at brooksby melton college um you will be doing the things not just talking about them so you will get a chance to work in the college grounds um in the glass houses as as well as your um you know your work experience that you do outside of college your theory classes and all that sort of thing we have you in on what we call routines where you work alongside our um, full-time grounds and glasshouse technicians um, as if you were at work to get additional skills um, that you will be able to use in the industry um, and, and you know, I, th I think the students really, really appreciate that, really like that about about the course that they're able to get stuck in and get involved in horticulture practically, uh, not just on paper. Um, how do I apply, um, Steve, to apply? Um, the website is the best way that that's right, isn't it, Chai? Website at the moment. Are yeah. there are there application forms in the prospectuses as well? Yes, so we've also got some in the FU guys. Um, the best way to apply is directly on our website and that will come through straight to our admissions team. And then and then from there we can um, um, put you in touch with one of the, the horticulture staff as well to, to have an interview and. and Um, looking back to see if there's any I have missed. Um, Jack, how will I be assessed? Uh, we've got one. Um, I really love horticulture. What's your favourite part of this course? 
Mines and mushroom exploration. Okay, so um, my, I mean, my favourite part of the course, <coughs> um, it, it, I suppose I'd have to say that the unit that I, t I teach to the horticulture students, um, so at the um, at the moment we're with them, we're planning um, some uh, bridge building projects. We're we're looking at the possibility of um, as as well as, as a few smaller projects that they're involved with with their timber landscape features. We're looking at making a decorative bridge um, from scratch. Um, so we're going to mill up some timber with a chainsaw mill um, uh, and produce a bridge. So that's that's really fun. You, you mentioned mushroom exploration there. So um, mushrooms, partic particularly or the fungi rather, particularly edible ones, are a, a sort of a, a special interest of mine. I did take um, the horticulture students out um, on a, a sort of a wild food forage a few weeks ago. Um, uh, we it was a bit before it was the best time of year for the for fungi, but we the the students collected some um, some rose hips and various things, and we we made some rose hip jelly and bits and pieces. So so as a as a bit of a um, a side track to the to the course, we do a bit of foraging and things like that. Um, but yeah. Mush, fungi and mushroom ideas a particular interest of mine um, but yeah I, I think my favorite bit is what I'm currently teaching to students the, the um, timber landscape stuff but that each student will have, have, have that will have their own favorite thing or or thing they um, they think they're most likely to pursue as a career uh, everyone's individual when it comes to that so we have one more, but sounds like amazing at Brooksby. Do we get to do routines as well as practical stuff? Absolutely. So um, the you'll do practical lessons, which will be um, you know with with the rest of your class and with a lecturer. But your routines, you'll be in smaller groups, not normally more than two or three, working with the the full time grounds team, um, or in the glass houses. Um, so so yeah you will be involved with um with working in the grounds in a number of capacities both as a student and as a uh, on those days that you do routines effectively as a um you know as a job um you'll get a few days to do that each year we do also go out um to other sites to do work obviously that that's been impacted a little by um covid this year um but we've still managed to make a few trips out to where you know where um because a lot of this happens outdoors it's it's fairly straightforward to remain socially distanced and and what have you so we've we've still managed to get a few trips out students were at chatsworth a few weeks ago i think i think there's something on the website about that um and it was shared on social media so they they were involved in a really exciting project there um so yeah an awful lot to do uh, routines and other and other practicals So what jobs are available? Um, what jobs are available? Um, well, um, all sorts really. I mean, um, there's quite a lot of op opportunities for self-employment in horticulture, whether that's sort of down the landscaping side of it or, um, or you know design various other things um garden centers nurseries and obviously when i say nurseries we're talking about propagating and producing plants for sale um there's the amenity horticulture side of it dealing with parks and um you know public spaces uh organizations like the national trust wildlife trusts um English heritage, they all, all need garden staff in one capacity or another. Um, businesses as well with large premises, they'll often require grounds people. So there's a, the, the sky's the limit really. It does, it depends a little bit on your, uh, what your specialism ends up being. 
uh, as to what what kind of job or career particularly interests you. Um, but then there's also uh, the option to go on for to do further study at higher education and go into things like plant science um, uh, and have that overlap into into industries like agriculture and um, yeah you, you know people will even go and specialize in sort of plant pathology diseases things like that so there's plenty of higher education options as well okay everyone that is the end of the session if you have any further questions please email course inquiries at proximelton.ac.uk you can also apply now directly on our website which is www.proximelton.ac.uk we'd like to thank jeff and thank you to everyone for joining our live Q&A today. Enjoy the rest of our virtual open day and we hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you.